Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another Total War video with the Terminator. Empire Total War may be one of the more forgettable games in Total War, especially when it comes to vanilla gameplay. It's got a mostly inactive AI in the campaign, a pretty submissive AI in the battles, and the game is riddled of course with loads of bugs and crash issues. But the game is also famous for some of the best mods ever made. Mods that took the empty shell and turned Empire into one of the most immersive and memorable games in the series. I'm talking of course about mods like Darth Mod, which vastly improved the AI, Empire Total War 2, which made a fabulous use of VDM and added hundreds of new units, and of course Imperial Splendor, which did a great job of trying to tackle everything all at once. But there's one mod I haven't covered yet which I've been seeing more and more about, that though may not be as polished and though at times might be too realistic, is constantly being recommended to me by Empire players. Imperial Destroyer and its its last version 6.3 is a mod that does everything really really well and puts a serious dent into Darth Mod when it comes to one of the best ever made for the game. It enhances battle AI in a way I've never seen before, it removes a lot of the historically inaccurate unit rosters in favor of more unique and fleshed out unit rosters, and not only that but it adds brand new factions and even new regions to the campaign map. Today, we'll be going through everything you need to know about Imperial Destroyer, from all of these new features, the AI, the challenge, why I really like it, and finally, a short guide on how to install the latest version. By the end of the video, I guarantee you will have no choice but to get in there and check it out. So let's get sponsored! Now this part of the video is just an excuse to do this insanely awesome voice to promote Raid Shadow Legends, that mature mobile sensation that everybody enjoys playing while waiting for the next turn in their Total War campaign. Right now, Raid Shadow Legends is all about this intimidating Doom Tower where you have to bring an elite team of champions to defeat weird but powerful creatures like this Scarab King or this really cute little sheep. This month, Raid Shadow Legends just released a giant new feature called Awakening with a brutal new dungeon, the Iron Twins Fortress, with some great prizes like awakening unique champions that come with blessings that make them more powerful, plus a new legendary champion, Ultimate Death Knight, which you can claim for free just by logging in and playing Raid for 7 days between now and October 27th. And with the unique DK Rises promo code, you can even get a bunch of free items to instantly level your strongest champion all the way to level 50. And by using the link in the video description, you can get unique and free prizes, including a free epic champion, Aina, 200,000 silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard, all of which will be waiting in your inbox right here. And by using this link, you'll be directly supporting the Terminator channel as well, so thank you. Now back to the topic at hand. Imperial Destroyer is a mod that actually started not long after the launch of Empire, with the latest version released back in 2015. The objective of the mod, as with most historical overhauls, is to fix many of the issues with AI behavior, bug and crash issues that make the game unplayable at times, add new content like new factions, new regions, and all the new mechanics with the VDM submod especially, and finally make the game feel more immersive and balanced for the player. But it's also a challenging mod. Public order is out of control in most of your regions. Recruitment and upkeep costs mean having a strong military force will take a substantial economic support, and you actually really do have to concentrate to beat the challenging battle AI. Diplomacy can be a little bit hit or miss sometimes with the occasional offers that don't make sense, but with the overhaul tech and building trees that feel a lot more realistic and that actually follow a proper progression in this time period, with the addition of unique rosters for every faction and removal of pretty much every vanilla unit in the game, the campaign is definitely an impressively fun time. It has to be said though, the biggest accomplishment of the mod on the campaign side are the new regions. Imperial Destroyer comes with a more fleshed out North America with a new Comanche region called Quivira, owned by the Comanche, and Zingob in the Hudson Bay region, which is owned by the new Cree. Over in Europe, we've got two new regions as well with Kiva in the Karakums, owned by the Khanate of Kiva, and Tabuk in Arabia, which is a proper Arabian region for the Ottomans. And finally, there's the new Banjar region in the East India trade zone owned by the new faction Banjar. Now just a quick disclaimer here, while there are some great things like these new regions and new factions like Moldavia, there are also a fair number of features on the campaign that are less than ideal that some sub mods do fix, but still if you don't use them it's worth mentioning. The tax system has been almost completely removed which kind of cripples the way you operate your economy, you can't move it to high or extortionate levels, so this is a very challenging aspect of the mod. 
Some campaign options like the retreat option when engaging in a battle have been removed, which I personally don't agree with. And just a smaller critique, but I personally am not a massive fan of the new music, which doesn't quite fit the time period. Apart from all of that though, Imperial Destroyer does come with a lot of pros. It does a decent job on the campaign side of making you think out of the box to deal with a challenging economy, a more aggressive and logical AI with brand new unit rosters, technologies, regions, and factions that all together turn Empire into a seriously good time. There are a few bugs and crash issues as there always will be with mods like this, but it's quite stable for what it is and generally the mod is quite balanced as well. When it comes to the battles, I actually have a sub mod here that I'm going to recommend called the Realistic Battles for Imperial Destroyer sub mod. This essentially overhauls the mod's battles to do things like lower casualty rates a bit, adjust ammo and armor to be a bit more realistic to the time period, and adjust things like the morale of newly recruited units, which is quite cool, and the impact of having fatigued units, which can break a lot more easily. Battles in Imperial Destroyer are seriously good. I'm not joking around here. Unit rosters have been completely over overhauled for every faction so that most if not all vanilla units have been removed in favor of new, unique, and fleshed out historically accurate units for this time. They have all had a lot of work done on stats, visual quality, performance in battles, and they all make battles more immersive than any other mod I've played for Empire. All of this goes the same for naval battles as well. I've personally had some fabulous naval battles as France taking on the British, as the Spanish trying to take out trade fleets in the East Indies, and more. I've always loved naval battles in Empire especially, and what Imperial Destroyer does here is slow things down a little, not too much, but just enough while making ships more powerful and impactful and even making the sailors or marines stronger as well. This naval aspect of the mod especially is a real joy to play. Overall, Imperial Destroyer adds so much to Empire, with the VDM mod that adds new mechanics, with the realistic battle sub mod that makes the battles even more immersive and enjoyable, the whole thing comes together to be one of the best mods I've ever played for the game. Compared to Empire Total War 2, it may be a little bit older and perhaps in some ways a little less polished and a bit too realistic maybe, but the content it adds, especially with the new regions, the new unit rosters, it makes the mod well worth playing. Installation is really quick and painless to be honest. All you have to do is follow the links in the video description to the 6.3 installation page, the VDM 2.2 page, and the Realistic Battle submod page. You download each of these using the installation part of the page here, which are all safe just in case you're worried. You then extract the files using a program like WinZip or WinRAR into your data folder in Empire like so. Lastly, you need to copy paste your user scripts file from the 1700 or 17 1983 folder into this directory on your screen now. And once you've done all of that, you should be good to go. And that's it for today, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, do leave a like and let me know your thoughts or questions in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you think about Imperial Destroyer. Don't forget to subscribe for more Total War content, gameplay, and news. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.